Hello everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Eric. Today I will be presenting to you about the optimization free ground contact force constraint satisfaction in quadrupedal locomotion. Uh, this is work done by me, uh, Previn Dangle, Professor Ali Rizaramizani from Northeastern University in Boston, USA. So a brief introduction of our work. Um, this work is uh, motivated um, as a algorithm to, to, uh, to be implemented in Husky Carbon. Uh, as seen in the picture, which is a quadrupedal robot um, that's capable of multiple uh, locomotion. In our case, uh, this is this robot is designed such that um, the, the the legs can be expanded outwards uh, into the UAV mode, as seen in the left picture. So um, the motivation of this work is to investigate an efficient and effective algorithm for locomotion on a, in a in a rough terrain. So um, this is a difficult problem because on legged locomotions, um, ground contact forces sati uh, constraints uh, must be um, satis uh, satisfied in order to achieve a stable gait. Um, the objective is to develop um, a, fair, um, a competitionally inexpensive algorithm that can be used in real time. In this slide, we present some examples of legged locomotion on rough terrains. Uh, we have like uh, legged robots such as uh, the little dog, Sarel's animal, which is uh, and cheetah, which is a fairly uh, famous work, and also like a, a bipedal example done by Atrias on these um, uneven surfaces. So um, this is a very difficult problem, typically done on um, rocky terrains like this or human-made. Um, terrains such as stairs or slope over here. So <clears throat> this is not an easy problem. Um, even humans, which we have a much better sense of balance than the robots that we currently have, sometimes have issues walking on slippery surfaces or uneven terrains. So this is a very challenging problem. And uh, it's as part of our motivations, we're looking for an algorithm that works well in real time, which will be very beneficial for this kind of problems. Next, I will talk about some of the past work um, involving uh, constraint uh, satisfaction algorithms. So we have here um, work by done by Caron in 2015, um, which is an explicit reference governor framework where um, they use a lipanov based energy-based uh, framework to manipulate reference such that um, the, ma the, ma the manipulated reference satisfies certain constraints equations. So we have used this algorithm or um, a version of it uh, implemented on a thruster assisted bipedal robot in simulation uh, done by Liang in 2021. Um, the addition of thrusters on a bipedal robot um, increased the control authority such that um, you can directly influence the ground forces uh, directly by using um, the thrusters. Um, in this work, we managed to have the robot to walk stably under slippery surface and we plan and in this work, uh, we use a similar algorithm, but um, tailored for a uh, quadruped. And we don't have any additional thrusters, so um, this will be a much uh, harder problem than uh, what we had before. In this slide, we'll um, briefly explain the full dynamic model on, uh, on this robot. So basically, the robot uh, has several forces, external forces acting on it. Uh, primarily, the, the equation motion can be described in this way, like we have the inertial dynamics contribution, we have the ground forces acting on uh, each like end positions, and we have a joint torque acting on these joints, which will become the, um, the input to the system. So in total, the system has an 18 degrees of freedom and 12 controllable inputs, and um, this has a lot of uh, moving components and uh, masses attached to it, so um, it can be a very um, complicated system. So we use a reduced order model in order to simplify this uh, for um, both the derivations and for simulation. So the simplification can be seen in the figure on the right. Um, the, the system, uh, we assume the leg to be massless, and we can describe the legs as a virtual legs that's defined by the, the joint uh, by the uh, this straight line here, determined by its orientation and length. Um, the only mass component will be the, the main body here, which is um, can be uh, um, can be described with, by just uh, the linear position and angular uh, the, the its orientation. And the ground forces acting on the leg will be um, determined uh, by um, the position and velocity of the leg and positions, which will be um, described in the next uh, slide. In total, we still have 
18 states but uh, because of the only one mass component the system is much much simpler in this slide we will be showing the the ground forces equation model so in this case like we have um, the, the the ground forces using a uh, three back friction and a uh, compliant ground model so in the z direction uh, this will determine the normal forces acting on the system and it's determined by the the, the foot uh, by a spring and damping model a very large spring and damping model when the the foot is uh, touching or below the ground it will be uh, subjected to a very large spring and damping forces uh, depending on the foot end position and velocities uh, on the x and y direction we are using a three back friction model uh, shown over here like uh, which um, which is a function of the normal force and the uh, uh, friction coefficients uh, to to to, um, to simulate the forces in x and y directions so this this uh, represents the static friction component and this is the the coulomb friction and the slope will be the viscous friction component so in this slide uh, we'll try to explain the um, how our um, explicit reference governor algorithm works so um, based on Lyapunov energy equations like if you have um, current reference and target reference we want to um, follow this constraint equation boundary uh, such that it lies on the minimum energy that still satisfies the, the constraint so for this to work we have to develop a mod constraint equation over here shown over here uh, in this case in the form of a linear equations so that um, this uh, boundary will become a hyperplane so our algorithm has three rate of descent use uh, depending on the current uh, manipulated reference position um, so when it's still satisfying the uh, constraint equation it's uh, it tries to directly go towards the the target reference shown by vr over here uh, on the boundary it will slide along the boundary using this uh, update rate vt and if due to some disturbance or um, some yeah due to the noise or disturbance if it goes inside this boundary it will be pushed out by vn so this is the rate of change uh, the rate of descent that we'll be using in this uh, algorithm to elaborate more on the rate of descent, we have a uh, direction and some uh, scalar here that uh, will be um, turned on or off depending on the where this uh, where this our current position is. Uh, I won't go into too much detail. Um, this can be um, uh, you can you can look at this in the paper for more details. But the idea is that um, we want it to um, move into the reference, slide along the boundary, and push it away from the uh, outside of the boundary. So in this slide, we're going to explain how we get the constraint equation. So we already simplified the system, but uh, we're going to simplify the system even further. Uh, for legged robots, typically, um, system can be described as a variable length inverted pendulum for a biped at least considering we're a quadruped we have two stance legs and uh and we need that to um to f um to ground forces components so we we utilize this inverted triangular uh, pendulum model so i won't get into too much detail on the derivations but um the general idea is that um this this point mass system can be described simply as this and we're going to set some constraints and simplifications to get this equation over here so in this way, we can actually solve for the ground forces as a function of uh, body acceleration, which um, which basically like uh, what we're going to use as a controller. And from there, like um, this, the body position relative to this foot um, can be can be tracked uh, by jo the joint controller. As mentioned from the previous slide, uh, we have a ground force function of body acceleration, so we're going to use that as our controller here. Um, this way, we can define the ground forces as a function of uh, body position and velocity reference, which will be manipulated by the ERG. So the swing foot, uh, the stance foot uh, controller is just simply the relative position between the body and the and this foot, and we're going to track that. Um, the walking gate, uh, the the swing foot gate, on the other hand, follows a simple uh, Bezier polynomials, uh, which is simply like uh, put the foot eight centimeter in front of the hip. Uh, with a target swing height of 20 centimeters so this is an animation of the robot walking on the slippery surface uh, first is without ERG as you can see it it uh, failed almost immediately uh, and then this is the the simulation with the ERG active um, 
so we we satisfy the friction con uh, constraint uh, from this uh, ground forces like red is normal and blue is uh, friction forces and uh, in doing so uh, we satisf uh, um, able to have the robot walk on top of a very slippery surface with a um, static friction coefficient of just 0 0.2 and here is some uh, plot of the simulation states uh, we have the body position um, with some reference that uh, it's simply tracking here uh, as you can see like it tracks the body position pretty well um, the velocity uh, shown here like also shown like it's a, a steady and consistent uh, for walking speed uh, the ground force uh, follows within the slip threshold as you can see here and the ground forces is um, positive all at almost all the time in this slide, we compare the constant equations between applied and target reference. On the left is the applied reference, as you can see here. Like um, in, in at the beginning, it's all it's somewhat um, violating it, and the algorithm push it away from the constraint uh, uh, towards a allowable region. On the other hand, if the robot keeps following the target reference, as you can see here, like it will be f violating the constraint, and that's why it slipped at the at the start of the animation shown. Um, so this is the difference between the applied and target. You can see like uh, this is our target reference and it's immediately go the other way um, and it's like uh, doing something something different compared to this target reference and uh, in order to satisfy this constraint. And that way like um, the robot uh, is able to walk uh, stably on a slippery surface. In conclusions, uh, we have derived a reduced order model for a quadrupedal robot where we implemented an explicit reference governor algorithm to manipulate the control references that um, it f uh, it satisfies a ground friction constraint uh, such that it can walk on slippery surface stably. So we have managed to run this um, algorithm at a speed of about 2000 Hz uh, on MATLAB. So we believe that uh, it's a sufficiently fast speed to be used in real time. Uh, for future work, we can try to implement this on the actual robot when it's walk on a slippery surface. That's it for uh, my presentation today. Thank you for listening and have a good day.